In the summer of 2015, Science 21 began to write curriculum for the new science standards that will be adopted by New York State. These standards are asking students to engage more actively in the practices that scientists and engineers use in their disciplines. In the fall of 2015, five school districts agreed to pilot this curriculum. In this video, you will see administrators, pilot teachers, and students engaging in the new Science 21 lessons designed to help improve teaching and learning for all students. If they couldn't articulate it in their language, because in these classrooms we have special education students and English language learner students, they were able to show it in their drawing. And I actually have a drawing here and the student is trying to say that the ice cube on the black paper will melt more and be smaller than the ice cube that's on the white paper because of the sun coming down. Well, we've always believed in hands-on learning, but I think what this is is more of the discovery. The children aren't being told what they'll find. They're being shown how to conduct their experiments and how to work together in groups with the science objects. But what they're doing is discovering the world around them by conducting these experiments together and then having the opportunity to speak to each other about it. The languaging of science is happening in classrooms. When we started to actually do these lessons and say we're doing an experiment today, they started to really see, like, wait a minute, I am you know, able to truly be a scientist. Not only do I have a picture of myself on the cover of my journal showing that, I actually am solving a problem or trying to make a change to something that I want changed. And I think that the Sunbrella unit, uh, the lesson with preventing that ice cube from melting was a big piece for them. Uh, very hands-on and you know kindergarten they had to touch the craft sticks and stretch the clay and you know wear the stuff on their head <laughs> whatever you have to do in kindergarten. But once they got through that and they started to have to dialogue between one another the children in my particular classroom, one of my students who is a specialized student, led that, and that to me was that was a moment that you know sticks with you in your in your teaching career most likely, but this particular year. The piece of it that's most interesting to me, or where I see the biggest difference, is with the idea of modeling and thinking about something that you're interested in learning more about, knowing that in your five-year-old life you can't really observe it. Uh, you, you can observe it, but you can't really interact with it. And so the idea of building something that can help you to understand something else, this content has been really relevant to their lives. Um, weather has been something, we've had a very exciting year with weather, and, and I find that we're still doing weather, like I can't stop, they won't let me stop. We're still tracking weather, we're looking at um, various forecasts. Can you tell me about it? So, um, this is the pink ball. I see it. Did it go somewhere? Mm-hmm. It goes, um, um, it... Oh, boy. This is the cup. It moved it all the, the way cup. off. It moved the cup. Which way did it go? Can you show me? The left way. It went the left way. Is there your arrow showing me that? Yeah. Good science drawing. My e l population of students in my classroom communicates completely successfully through science. It's actually their strongest subject area in the day. This is the kind of curriculum and the kind of questions and the kind of science that's asking them to solve the problem. I've been teaching kindergarten for a very long time. This program is probably the first program that I have children retaining and using the information in, in their world. It's all just alive. It's every single day science is in their lives. <laughs>